Hi everyone and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tina. I am the Capability Building Coordinator for Connecting Up and TechSoup New Zealand. Connecting Up is a not-for-profit organisation. Our purpose is to help fellow not-for-profits leverage the digital world to positively impact their communities. The digital world is expanding beyond IT, software, hardware and digital marketing to new innovative service delivery and measuring social impact. Connecting Up believes that not-for-profits with the right tools and skills can and do achieve great things for their communities. We have a long history of affordable software, hardware, educational events and group consulting. We partner with over 40 organisations to deliver high quality products and services specifically meeting the unique needs of the not-for-profit sector. I'd like to welcome you all to the webinar, How to Secure Your Mobile Workforce, which will be presented by Shane Corker from RAA. We'll start with a little bit of housekeeping. All lines are muted, so if you have any technical issues or any questions during the session, please type it into the questions box on your webinar panel and Shane will answer them in the Q&A section at the end of the webinar. Please note that your comments and questions will not appear to the entire group. If you are on a Wi-Fi connection and have multiple programs open, this can sometimes affect the quality of your audio and video of the webinar. If possible, please close all other programs to help you have the best experience possible. Please note that the webinar is being recorded and the link to the recording and the slides will be sent to you within two business days after the webinar ends. Before we start, I'd also like to remind you that there will be a short survey at the end of the webinar. We'd really appreciate it if you took a few minutes to provide us with some feedback on today's webinar. That's all from me for now. I'll pass it over to Shane to get things started. Fantastic. Uh, well, good afternoon, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining this webinar on, on how to uh, secure your mobile workforce. So today's, I guess, webinar is an opportunity for me to share some of my knowledge on I guess a really simple and easy way to manage the safety and security of uh, people that either have people that work alone or in isolation and people that have or organisations that have a, a mobile workforce. I guess a brief introduction to um, RAA. Sorry, bear with me one moment. A brief introduction uh, to REA for, for those that uh, aren't aware of who we are. REA is uh, South Australia's motoring organisation and have a member base of just over 710,000 within South Australia. And we've been keeping South Australia's uh, members and also the community safe, secure and mobile since 1903. Um, our four main killer uh, pillar uh, uh, business uh, units, uh, you mainly probably recognise us for our road service that we provide. We also specialise in insurance products. We also have a, uh, travel, a travel department where we actually offer travel services like travel insurance and travel planning services. Um, however, another key major pillar to our business unit is our security uh, division, where we provide medical monitoring, um, alarm monitoring to premises, both domestic and uh, commercial, as well as personal uh, personal alarm monitoring. So throughout today's um, program, I'm going to cover off a few things. Main thing is, uh, I guess, some of those organisational challenges, which you may actually re resonate with. I'd like to share, I guess, a, a recent case study of uh, how we've partnered up with an Adelaide not-for-profit um, organisation to address some of their, their safety challenges and ensuring peace of mind to their workers who are out in the community working. I'll go through what is RAA Safe Zone Loan Worker app, how it works and, and operates. Um, I'll also go through some of the benefits um, uh, that Safe Zone uh, could benefit your businesses. And I'll also share through, I guess, some of those businesses and organisations that are already using Safe Zone. And this will then conclude the webinar and we'll open up for, um, for some discussion. So uh, I guess, yeah, let's, let's get started. So organisational challenges. Uh, over the last few years that I've been engaging with, I guess, smaller businesses all the way to, to large scale organisations, some of the main questions I get really asked is how to, I guess, effectively manage workers either working alone uh, or in isolation. 
And how can we have, I guess, workers uh, easily check in to ensure that they're okay or not okay? And doing all of this without impairing too much uh, financially, but also within internal resources as well. I guess with today's uh, mobile and flexible workforce, and the importance of organisational work health and safety obligations. It is um, key that you have the correct measures and processes in place to ensure that those working alone or in isolated areas are safe and accounted for every day. So we'll look at um, managing worker presence for large worker and flexible workforce. So in addition to, I guess, those workers that are working alone, some organisations do have people um, or workers undertaking some, some higher risk activities as well. Um, just for an example, this could be a, a scientist testing chemicals in a, a laboratory. It could be a financial counsellor either uh, who experiences some challenging, uh, I guess, or uncomfortable situations with a client, or it could be even an outreach worker that is subjected to drugs, alcohol, or, or mental health. Um, managing your work, your work at presence is, is really important. And I guess if you, you have a team of, I don't know, 25 outreach workers spread across a large geography space, um, and there isn't a need for workers to physically come into an office because they can access their jobs um, and, and their day through smart technology like iPads, laptops, etc. From an organisation's point of view, how do you effectively make sure that from when they're starting their job uh, to when they finish that everything is okay and they are actually safe? So effective work, effective management of uh, WH compliance, um, some of you may or may not, but under the under section, I think it's nine, section 19 of the Work Health and Safety Act, all persons uh, conducting business or undertaking have a, a duty of care so far as reasonably possible for the health and safety of their workers while they're at work. So whether that's on a, a premises or whether that workplace is a car or whether that workplace is someone's home, uh, you've got a duty of care to ensure that you've taken, I guess, the right steps and processes to ensure that that worker is in a safe and secure environment. Another challenge I have also been um, asked is how can we, you know, if there is an incident, how do we get the right help to a worker quickly? And in any critical emergency situation, time is the most important factor and the ability to, I guess, get the right help to that worker when required, it can be a matter of the, the life and death. The last challenge is um, uh, an organisational challenge is, is using a buddy system to complete one worker's job. So some of you may or may not resonate with this, but it is a really good and effective way of, of mitigating the risk for people to work alone. However, it does come at a, uh, a financial cost that, and it can restrict the amount of reach organisations can provide to, to their customers. So I'd like to share this, this recent case study of uh, Hutt Street Centre, who we've recently partnered up with. So Hutt Street Centre uh, is a place, it's a place here in, in local Adelaide CBD, and Hutt Street Centre offers social work and support services to uh, homeless people and to people that are sleeping rough. Now it's actually a place for people uh, to go and feel valued and for them to also engage with people in the community who care about their lives and helping them really find opportunities and new opportunities um, and hope without any judgment. Um, now Hutt Street Centre approached the REA and talked to us about their cohort of employees called, called case navigators. And these case navigators, um, they work and they support homeless people um, to understand some of the challenges and what they're trying to achieve and where they're actually trying to get to. And they work with them to then achieve those outcomes and to sort of really realise opportunities and get them on a, uh, get them on a path. 
Now, some of the main programs that uh, the centre uh, provides are case management and support services, uh, education and, and employment opportunities. They also provide a meal service, um, aged, aged home community care assistance, as well as in-home and support for pastoral care. So these case navigators, they are the frontline staff in, in the face of, of Hutt Street. And these are uh, the workers who really impact homeless people on, on the streets of Adelaide. So some of the challenges, so Hutt Street came to us with, I guess, a number of, of challenges. And these challenges were, the case navigators were, were out in the community at times when, when people, uh, when a lot of people were, uh, aren't around. So it's either dark, it's cold, um, not a lot of people to call on for help at times. And they had a challenge of really providing a safe and secure environment away from their main place of employment, which is the Hutt Street Centre. They wanted to address um, the need for improved work health and safety structure because Hutt Street Centre is a not-for-profit uh, and they saw a gap within some of their processes and the Hutt Street Centre saw that gap but they also, being a not-for-profit, they need donations to keep them viable and they need to engage not only within the community, but the business community. And they needed to let the business community know that they're doing, I guess, everything that they possibly can, um, not only for their workers, but also for the homeless people that they're actually trying to help and serve on the streets. So protecting, that's really protecting their brand. And ultimately what they wanted to do is, they just wanted to find a simple, single uh, emergency management system that their whole cohort could use and something that wasn't that wasn't difficult and that they could have um, all the time and that's where um, that's where we sort of stepped in and we sort of provided them with RAA safe zone which is a 24 which is monitored 24 7 uh, 360 days a year by RAAs ASIO Grade 1 Monitoring Centre here at uh, Mile End in South Australia. So what we did was we engaged with their case navigators and we also engaged with um, their business broadly. And we worked through uh, some of those challenges of how we were going to address them. So REA Safe Zone was able to provide them with a timely and effective response. So any alert that came through that application, um, that's classified as a priority one alarm. And it's actually actioned within 60 seconds by our monitoring centre operators. So we were able to provide, I guess, real-time coordination of emergency management. So when a case, navigator, a case navigator raises an alert, um, we were able to respond to that alert within 60 seconds. And we are then responding in a way that they want us to triage the emergency. So it's not always uh, it's not always emergency services straight away. It might be in a way that uh, we call the case navigators or we call the case navigators uh, manager or senior manager. And we're doing it in a way that uh, I guess it ensures that that emergency management plan can suit their business needs. So ultimately, uh, what we did is we, we unified their safety approach for all their staff that are working in some of these challenging environments. So everyone you could say is is has got the same system and they're they're singing from the same the same hymn sheet. So our monitoring centre also have the real time visualisation and tracking. So when an incident is actually raised through the application, um, we can immediately see where they are and we can respond if necessary and really deploy the right help to them quickly. Now, when staff are also encountering some, I guess, uh, challenging situations, 
they have the option to uh, either raise in the, an immediate alert um, straight away or they can use the check-in timer. Now, the check-in timer is used when, when case navigators is either sitting down with a client um, and they have the ability to set a designated time and at the five minute mark, that will give them an audible alert to either cancel that alert, uh, to reset the alert and extend some time, um, to cancel the alert completely and move on to their, their next appointment, or they may not actually cancel the alert at all and that's where we'll immediately respond. So the outcomes. So all in all, summing that up, so REA Safe Zone was able to, I guess, meet Hutt Street Centre's main challenges about addressing safety and security uh, and the peace of mind uh, to their workers should they need to call for help. And we were there, and we were there to respond. It also gave them uh, an opportunity to identify scope for improving their work health and safety processes and really establishing a simple, a simple selection uh, consistent emergency management application for their, their whole cohort. So the outcomes for them were, were really important and have been positive. So it's about, I guess, providing duty of care uh, to their field workers. So when you've got, I guess, people uh, who are really caring and deep feeling people, they want to provide uh, and they want to provide community service. The last thing that they often uh, think about is their own welfare. So they're generally people that think about others' welfare, other people's welfare first. And what we were able to do is to demonstrate duty of care to help build confidence uh, within the field workers. Now we're also able to provide a timely and accurate response. So regardless of their location, if they're at work or not, one of the benefits um, of REA Safe Zone is it's 24 seven and it is Australia wide. And also the case navigators, um, their main point of difference in this situation is using the check-in timer. So as you can just see in this slide here on the right, uh, that is John Bauer, one of their case workers, case navigators. And just as he's mentioned in one of those quotes there, is they use this as a distraction point um, if they're entering into a, 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 an unknown environment or a person that they don't know. And it gives them a five minute alert before the expiry which just provides them with a bit of a distraction point um, so they can take a break from that situation. So what is Safe Zone? Uh, so REA Safe Zone, it's a loan worker application on a smartphone, and it's a work health and safety management solution for organisations with people that, have, people that have a workforce that either work alone or in isolation or um, they just have a mobile workforce. So the application itself um, can increase um, organisations and their uh, capability to respond to worker emergencies and incidents. And it's really a proactive safety management solution. So in the next couple of slides, we'll go through the operation and how it works, because I'm sure you'll be all uh, interested to, to know the, the, the detail on that. Uh, so how it works, so you've got an application on, on your smartphone, um, whether you need um, police attendance, whether you need uh, medical uh, first aid, um, it's, as ma it's a matter of just pressing one of those buttons and that will raise an alert and that will come through to REA and we will call that device back and try and ascertain, uh, ascertain the, the response. And failing, failing that response, we then have a backup response, whatever your organisation has put in place to take the next action. So for example, if uh, I was uh, out into someone's home and I felt a little bit uncomfortable, you could press that red button and that, that triggers a duress response. So we will call you back and if we can't uh, ascertain with you, we take that next step. So that might be, 
calling your team leader, or it might be calling the police. Um, so it, those buttons are all customizable depending on what, uh, what is gonna to suit to your business. So what happens once you've, you've raised an alert? So again, your, your phone is gonna go into um, uh, the, sending, the sending mode, and depending on what button you press, that'll again, generate that type of emergency response through to our monitoring center, and we will call you back to triage the alarm. So each one of those buttons uh, is customizable, but for a default response, if you're in fear for your life, you might wanna hit that red button. If you hit the first aid, we're gonna take that as you need medical aid to where you are. And the blue button, which is the help button, that's neither of the two. So you might be wondering, well, what could I use that for? Some organisations might just need another person uh, called within a different department, or it might be that someone has got a flat tire or broken down a vehicle. Um, or it could be, yeah, we need, um, we need um, a, a person from this uh, department within the organisation attend to that site. So those buttons are, are customisable to, to your business needs. So the next steps in, in uh, raising alert is your, your phone and application will send a GPS location and coordinates through to our monitoring centre. Um, and our monitoring centre will acknowledge that and respond to, uh, respond to your request. So they will ultimately get you the right help uh, to your location, whatever you need, whether it would be police, medical aid, or another form of help. So if you're undertaking any high risk activity, or you might just need to put a time limit on uh, a particular job, um, it is simple as using the check-in timer function. So just to paint a little bit of a picture, if uh, you are maybe an outreach worker and you've got five appointments for the day, each of those five uh, appointments, they may roughly take about an hour each, but you wanna make sure that your staff member uh, is okay and has uh, checked out of those um, five appointments. Um, that, that person can set a time limit for 60 minutes and that will effectively count down to 60 minutes. At the five minute mark, it will give you that audible alert to say, look, is everything okay? If so, add some more time in. If not, it's gonna cancel out or you might have finished your appointment and need to move on to your next job and that's where you might cancel it. So if you don't cancel it, what that is effectively gonna do is automatically send an alert to RAA and our monitoring centre operators are gonna go through that emergency management plan, call you to check on your welfare, and if not, we'll take the next steps as necessary. So what are, what are the benefits and how could this uh, benefit your organisation? So one of the biggest outlays when a business uh, is looking into either loan worker uh, a solution is the investment to purchase either the hardware as well as the ongoing maintenance or potential monitoring fees that are associated, associated with that. Or internally, if you are gonna do it yourselves, then how can you manage that internally with FTE? So if you're a large, if you have a large uh, mobile workforce, then you know this may not be financially viable. So the benefit with with SafeZone, it is an app on a smartphone. So it can deployed, it can be deployed uh, either on dedicated work phones or it can be deployed onto personal phones. So this is a real cost effective way to offer peace of mind of protection to workers in your workforce. Now your workforce also may be rapidly growing or expanding, it could be Australia-wide. Um, SafeZone is quick and easy to deploy, so it's literally you download an application and we can offer quick and easy protection uh, to your workers to ensure you also comply with your work health and safety regulations. And for those that are, I guess, working uh, in high risk environments, your check-in timer uh, becomes your most valuable tool. 
So giving you the flexibility can, to conduct your work. And if you don't check in, RA can respond and if needed, get the right help to your, uh, to your location quickly. So it can also increase your business uh, productivity and reach by, I guess, reducing the need to use two workers to complete one worker's job, which will obviously be a financial benefit as well. And I guess probably the most important um, aspect is really to show that your show your workers that you uh, you generally care about their work and and safety, and providing them peace of mind that they can complete their uh, their work knowing that help is just uh, just a press of a button away. So who's using Safe Zone currently? So these are just a snapshot of who is using Safe Zone across a variety of different environments. Um, and globally, uh, there's over a million people that already use the Safe Zone product since it launched um, about six, six or seven years ago. So you've got uh, people from universities, you've got uh, not-for-profit organisations, and you've got some um, uh, commercial distribution as well. So Tina, I think uh, that sort of concludes uh, the presentation. I'd like to uh, see if that's, we can open that up for uh, discussion. Thanks, Shane. Um... I don't think we have any questions that have come through. Um, so I might just give it a, about a minute or so and see if yep. there's anything that comes through. Okay, Karen has asked, how much does it cost? Sure. So, and yep, in sorry. addition to that, sorry, um, Tony has also asked, is it a subscription model? So I thought you could combine the two and answer that. Absolutely. So uh, yes, so it is a subscription model uh, platform. So the application is actually free to download. Um, and what uh, your investment is, is the 24 seven monitoring that REA provides um, nationwide. So for connecting up uh, members, um, you do get an exclusive rate, which is $5.80 plus your GST uh, per week per user. And that's a flat fee, no matter how many, um, no, no matter how many users you um, sign up to. So if you've got one user, you'd pay your $5.80, but if you've got 10 users, you'd pay that same flat fee for 10 of your users. Okay, Christine has said, you said if you have a large workforce, it's not cost effective. We are small, so would it be cost effective for small organisations? Yeah, absolutely. So if you've got um, a small organisation where you may have only one or uh, one or two people that you need to provide a safety, uh, a safety and secure environment for, you can quickly and easily deploy this application to those two, two users or how many users you've, you, you have there. And that uh, ensures that not only you meet your work health and safety obligations, but you've also given them um, you know, peace of mind that they've got uh, something to call on for help as well. Okay, Tony has asked, what sort of minimum staff member numbers are required? There's no minimum staff members. So you can have one or you could have 400 if you wanted it. Okay, um, Jasmine has asked, is there a way to access the app without having to unlock the phone? Uh, is there a way to access the app without unlocking the phone? So good question. So Jasmine, what uh, at the beginning of, uh, for example, every shift, um, you do need to start up the application. So once that application is started up, there is a program in the back of SafeZone which doesn't um, go into sleep mode. But if you need to put it into sleep mode, 
um, the only way to then access the app is to unlock your phone. So whether you use that through your, um, your fingerprint or whether you put that in as a code, there are um, those ways to unlock it quickly. But as soon as you've unlocked it, you've got it straight on your home screen there as well. Um, Sebastian wants to know if that app is available on both Android and iPhone. Yes, it is. Okay. And Bridget says, we are interested in how the app was created, who created it and at what cost? Yeah, very good question. So the application is an Australian uh, made product and it was uh, uh, created by a company called Critical Arc. And Critical Arc, they are based in Wollongong. Um, and it was actually created for the university spaces. So what RIA has done is we've actually white labeled that product from Critical Arc. Um, how it was used in university spaces is university spaces have their own 24 seven security and response team. Um, so if they've got student or staff that are on their site that need help, that help um, goes to those responders that are on the ground and their security team. So they can get the help to those students or people um, quickly. However, for organisations, um, either like yourselves or some, um, some other organisations, they actually don't have their own um, security, their 24 seven security response team. So that's where we saw an opportunity to be able to help um, to join up with Critical Arc use this solution to be able to help organisations that, that don't have that, uh, that resource and we're there to sort of bridge the gap. Um, Tony has asked, have there been instances where the system has satisfied WHNS duty of care requirements? Um, in terms of, um, can you clarify that a little bit, Tony? We'll wait for Tony to clarify and we'll move on yep. to another question. Okay. Um, Bridget has asked, what was the development cost from Critical Arc? Oh, I can't, I don't know the answer to that. I can find that out and come back to you. But uh, yeah, they've, they've been work, they, they started about six, six or seven years ago and they use it in a more of an enterprise solution. So we're the only, um, we're the only organisation that's been able to white label the product and actually monitor it externally. So most organisations, if you are, for example, a university, you would purchase this depending on the amount of users or subscription people that you would have on board. Um, but I wouldn't know the cost of uh, yeah, the development on that one. Um, I can pass Bridget's t details on to you, Shane, and you can contact yeah. her directly with yeah, the definitely. answer to that question. Um, Sebastian has asked, can, can you quickly summarise the costs again? Um, and what I'll do also is I will send an email out to everybody um, with the cost outline for connecting up members okay. as well. Yep. Yep. Yeah, so uh, summing up the cost. So the cost for the application, it's actually free to download. So you can actually download, anyone can download the application. However, you won't be able to access and log in because that's where we need to actually onboard you. So you can actually download it, there's no cost. And the actual cost of the monitoring is uh, a low $5.80 uh, plus your GST per user per week. Okay, I'll send that information out to everybody as well so that um, okay. you all have it in writing. Um, and Tony has come back to us and said, has there been a case of a worker claiming compensation that had used this service and it was found to be sufficient protection? To answer that question shortly, no, I don't have any uh, evidence of that, that anyone has used it. We have had a few uh, activations, which has mainly been false alarms but we have acted in our response to be able to, um, uh, yeah, uh, escalate that. But there hasn't been any real live, um, uh, yeah, compensa compensation claim to say, look, this was uh, definitely a useful, uh, a useful tool in this situation. 
Okay, looks like we don't have any other questions that have come through. Was there anything that you wanted to add, Shane? Uh, no, but uh, in terms of that, I think I've got my contact details at this slide here. So I guess if anyone had any questions, um, feel free to contact me either yeah, email, phone or my LinkedIn account and be happy to, uh, to help out in any way. Fantastic. Thank you, Shane, for presenting today and thank you everyone for joining us. I hope you've all learnt a lot from this presentation and that all of your questions have been answered. If you do have any questions that come to mind later or any feedback at all about the webinar, please send that through to events at connectingup.org and we'll answer those questions offline. You can also contact Shane directly via the information on your webinar screen at the moment. Um, don't forget that the recording will be available within two business days and a link will be sent to you along with the slides and the costing as discussed earlier so keep an eye out on your inbox again thank you everyone for being with us enjoy the rest of your day and we look forward to seeing you all next time thanks again shane thanks everyone thank bye everyone. bye, -bye.